Hello, everybody. Um, hope you guys are having a nice week and you guys had a nice weekend. And I hope all are well and safe. <clears throat> um, today, I'm going to talk to you all a little bit about um, our next genre of music or, that we're uh, diving into this week, and that is mariachi. Um, I'm just going to introduce it a little bit and talk historics uh, with it uh, just briefly, um, and then uh, Professor Sanchez is going to um, uh, share some some other stuff with you all. And um, there are a couple of readings, and, and uh, this week you guys are, are watching a, a concert too. Um, it's an hour-long concert. Um, I'm going to post it on um, Learn, and uh, you guys are going to be able to kind of discuss that um, a concert and like... Uh, the effectiveness of live instrumentation, but also about <clears throat> um, the influence and stuff like that that you're seeing even in 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 uh, the context of having a, a watching a concert. Um, but that'll all be in the in the module for the week. But first, let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about our beloved uh, music uh, mariachi. One thing I want to discuss um, more than anything is the fact that um, in regard to mariachi, we get to see that although uh, we do have um, this wonderful uh, uh, music that ends up being even um, a national um, <clears throat> associated music of, of Mexico, we see that there is also um, a different background and explanation for all the different um, elements of uh, mariachi music. And mariachi music is something that we uh, almost sometimes take for granted because we are in an area, being that we are in a, a border state, that that um, it's a, a common uh, form of music that we hear, not only like on the radio, but when we go to restaurants, when we go to family functions, uh, mariachi is a part of it a lot of times and sometimes it's a small mariachi group sometimes it's a, a full um, mariachi orchestra but the important thing is to understand like where this all comes from like where did did mariachi um, uh, get its birth if you will and we talked last week a bit of, a little bit of well not a little bit of a, a good amount about son harrocho and we see that that um, these uh, uh, genres, if you will, of music end up being very influential with each other. Um, and Son Jarocho um, happens to be very influent, uh, is very um, influential to mariachi. And Son, Son Jarocho is, is an old um, uh, genre, right? But mariachi is old too, but there, um, it's influenced highly by um, the practices and stuff like that um, of Son Jarocho. Um, and we'll talk uh, more about that as I could progress through this. But this is um, a photo of everybody knows Vicente Fernandez. He's probably the most, um, one of the most well-known mariachis or ranchera, because that's the other form too, is like there's mariachi and mariachi ranchera um, music, right? And um, he's probably like the most well-known. And like when you go to <clears throat> a restaurant or wherever, or even like, like I said, a wedding or whatever, and we hear mariachis, like a lot of times we hear Volver, Volver <clears throat> from uh, Vicente Fernandez. Um, and it's a, it's become a, um, a common uh, uh, song or like a, a traditional song um, of the mariachi uh, genre of music. Um, but as you can see there, there we have, um, the typical uh, mariachi ensemble or group, right? Um, all together playing with their variety of instruments and their and their attire, um, <clears throat> and it ends up being, like I said, like the national genre of music for for Mexico. But there's also a lot of interesting things about mariachi that make it even more um, exciting to learn about, not just about the structure and the sounds, which we'll, we'll be discussing too during this week, but also about the background. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So what is mariachi? Mariachi is a musical genre, and it originated in the 19th century in Mexico. So you're talking in the 1800s. Now, that doesn't mean that mariachis or, or ranchera music wasn't played before. I'm sure it was, but our first like uh, record of this um, 
is in the 1800s. And the earliest written version of the word mariachi dates back to 1852 um, over in Nayarit. Um, and basically having a meaning of like a fandango, which is like what we learned about in San Jarocho, uh, was that idea of, of fandango music or, or like a popular festivity where people would come together and jam, right? Like a jam session. But then it ends up turning into this. But that's like what it basically is. But where it comes from is kind of an interesting thing too. So the origin of, of, of mariachi music starts with Cortez um, took over um, Central America or Me Mexico um, and made it New Spain. Like when he came over in 1519, he did bring um, musicians with him. And so you're talking about uh, people that were um, uh, using European style instruments, uh, like we talked about the past with the European influence. But over time, that music ended up blending, like we, we've been discussing about these influences and including other things like native style uh, music and, and African music also being a part of it with the rhythms and all of, all of those things. And geographically where this is all going down is kind of interesting too. So um, the native region of uh, Western Mexico, which is basically like uh, Jalisco, Nayarit, Zacatecas, Aguascalientes, uh, Michoacan, all of those places end up being kind of the home of, of mariachi music, specifically in like, I don't want to get any of my my uh, my mariachi friends angry, but um, Jalisco is um, always discussed as as the birthplace of mariachi music, and so Jalisco ends up being um, the place that most people will say um, uh, mariachi music came from from that region, right? Uh, the state of Jalisco. But other places like Veracruz and, and like we talked about before with Son Jarocho also become a, a part of, of this, right? And so um, the idea about it is that this ends up being like uh, um, a genre of music that addresses ideas of, of, of um, banding together as a culture and things like that. Um, but geographically, this is where it's where it starts, but the exact location is unknown because it's a genre of music. So you can't really like pin down all the time this kind of stuff. Um, but we do know that it's from this region. We don't know like exactly like the person that created it or the town or anything like that. But we do know that it expand, extends all the way up to Durango and Sinaloa and, and all these other places. Um, instrumentation, that's the other thing I wanted to get to. So instrumentation is very important with this because we go from uh, uh, from having people like um, the Spanish come in here and having this African influence and indigenous influence like we heard about from Martina Espino and also from, from Professor Sanchez uh, but, and even me uh, uh, talking about these, these different influences. But the instruments of, of mariachi um, end up being really um, encompassed with uh, uh, the influence of European instrumentation. Now that doesn't mean that like it was played the same way that um, uh, instruments in Europe are played. It doesn't mean that at all. What it means is that's an instrument they use, but that doesn't mean they played it that way. Just like Martin said, remember like we know that they made these little flutes, but we don't know if they played them that way. But with this, with mariachi, we know because we see a difference in it, right? Um, so although they are stringed instruments, um, and we even have things like a violin, like a violin is a very European instrument, right? Like there wasn't anything like that here. I mean, we did see like different string instruments here in the new world or what is in Mexico, but most of it's going to be, um, stuff from Europe. So we have the guitar, uh, the vihuela, which is like an instrument that's similar to a guitar, but smaller. And instead of having six strings, it has five strings. So kind of similar in a way to, um, uh, uh, the harana, uh, harana from, from San, uh, Son Jarocho. So it's kind of similar to that. Um, but that's like one of the key signatures of, of, of mariachi sound is, is the vihuela. And then there's the guitar, which is a classical guitar. And then the guitarron, which is um, a, basically means a large guitar, but it's basically a six string bass, acoustic bass. So that's the bass for, for the, um, 
mariachi uh, group. And the other thing too, I wanted to, to comment on too is that um, when they brought this over, they they brought over the idea of the Spanish theatrical uh, ensemble or, or 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 little orchestra, right? Um, that would play all these instruments all at once. So orchestration and stuff like that's already going on in Europe. And now they bring it over to the new world and some of these instruments end up staying, right? And then they end up making it a part of, of the culture of, of Mexico. Um, and that's basically what mariachi ends up being. It's like a little small orchestra um, that has this influence of different groups, anything from African to indigenous and then European. Um, even things like the trumpet end up being a, a part of it, and that won't that won't happen until the ni until the 20th century. So the 1900s that'll be added in, but before that, um, violins and all these other instruments end up being a part of it. There's no drums um, in mariachi. Um, the rhythm comes from um, uh, the rhythm patterns of the guitars and the and the vihuela. Um, the strumming, right? And the strumming ends up being that rhythm. Uh, that we see that's um, uh, ha partly influenced by African traditions and partly Af influenced by um, indigenous traditions. But basically what ends up happening is um, these end up being used um, in a variety of ways to be able to um, write songs and come up with um, classics and traditional tunes um, that we still hear today. Like there's some, some mariachi songs that are around now that we'll go to a restaurant, like I said, here at our prima's wedding that have been played for, you know, a couple hundred years now. So it's pretty amazing. One of the most <clears throat> common things that we think about when we think about mariachis is the outfit, right? And so the outfit is kind of an interesting thing because it's, 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 it's a take on a couple of different things. So we have the bow, obviously, and then the wide bow, the bow tie, right? And then the sombrero, and then the pants and jacket, and then the short boots. Um, a lot of it is based off of the charro um, um, or ranchero um, uh, attire, right? Like this is what a, a ranchero would wear, um, a guy working on a ranch or whatever. I mean, this is like fancy though, right? Like it's not like, oh, I'm gonna go work and do all kinds of ranch style work in like a fancy outfit. But they take it and they embellish it they embellish it in a way that's kind of interesting because when we see the patterns and stuff like that of um, mariachi outfits, a lot of times there's like this really indigenous tinge to it. And so you look at this bell and I mean, that's like some ancient Mesoamerican style um, um, art that we see there, even on the bow, right? Um, and then even in the hats, we have these, these shapes and these patterns and things like that. Um, that are embellishments of that. And those embellishments um, have that influence of that indigenous culture of the past. And then we have those boots and stuff like that that are like more modern, right? More of that um, European influence. And so um, the suit itself is very um, European in, in many regards. Like that's where that came from. The, the style of suit came from that. But then all these patterns, they've made it to where it's also um, indicating and um, paying homage, if you will, to those indigenous pasts. So that's what's kind of interesting about the attire. And, and we don't really hear about that too much uh, regarding um, uh, mariachi um, music, right? But we know that, you know, we see a mariachi and we're like, yep, that's a mariachi. But we don't, we forget about these things too. Like even the the symbol of the eagle. I mean, there's all this different stuff and, and that's what ends up being part of that um, national um, connection too, is that idea of the mestizaje where we're, we're mixing, right? And these two different cultures come together uh, to make this and, and this ends up being celebrated, right? But now it's almost been um, exploited in a lot of ways too. So we take this beautiful national idea of this music that's 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 um significant and 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 um real uh to mexico and attached to mexico and then now we have it all over the place um in movies i mean it's all over so like now um people are uh associated totally with that because now it's become even in, in 
embedded in pop culture, right? And even around us, like we can be, like I said, we'll go to the, the restaurant and we have mariachis no matter where we go. Like I was in Canada one time and I went to a, a, a Mexican restaurant there and they had mariachis in Canada, you know, like it's all over the place. Oh, I forgot to mention this, mariachi songs. So what are mariachi songs about? Like what do, what do they sing about? What is, what is the theme of a lot of these songs? Well, a lot of it has to do with a lot of interesting things. Anything from machismo to love, betrayal, death, politics, animals, revolutionary heroes, they write about everything. But a lot of times um, it's, it's in a ballad form, right? So you hear these ballads and sometimes it's about like, being macho, like that idea of machismo ends up being a, 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 a huge factor or a huge influence in the style of this music and the and the um, the themes of songs. Like I'm a man and this is what I do, right? And like all this stuff. Like I always think of when I when I hear the word machismo, I always think about Vicente Fernandez. Like he he like epitomizes that, you know, doing his performance and 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 playing and singing with his very like deep masculine voice and he has a pistola on his side still to me it's just like he's on a horse like i saw him in a concert one time riding on a freaking horse um that's machismo right like he's we see that it's that portrayal but then he writes about these songs they or mariachis write about these songs about love and it's always about my heart being broken right betrayal um and then even death um, but we also hear mariachi songs about politics and animals, like about horses. Like we hear about like country westerns, oh, my dog died. But we also hear mariachi songs about the same stuff, all right? And we also hear about revolutionary heroes, like these heroes of um, Pancho Villa and, and Emiliano Zapata and all these people end up being uh, themes for some of these songs. And so that's one thing that's interesting, too, is like, what are these songs about? But a lot of times it's attached to this kind of stuff, which is kind of interesting too. Um, but these end up being the songs told um, are, are that are telling of this of this group, right? This of Mexico, like they they tell what the essence of Mexico is, in a lot of times, and and a lot of times it's sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Um, so some of the themes uh, may be something positive, some may be negative. But the thing is, is that's what makes mariachi what it is. Now we see, like I said before, we see mariachi all over the place now. So it went from being something that people kind of just got together and jammed to being like, hey, like we're going to have this for events. So we see it in um, anything from uh, uh, serenata to funerals, weddings, baptisms, um, Cinco de Mayo, um, the uh, Mexican Independence Day. Um, it's all over the place. And mariachi has even uh, branched off into like... Um, being incorporated into like even music and church and stuff like that, the Roman Catholic Church. Um, so it's it's kind of like the pop music, if you will, of Mexico, right? And so not that Mexico doesn't have pop music, it does, but like that's the genre it ends up being. Like people will end up like it's it's very um, common, it's very practice, and it's very um, uh, you know, normal, like we will see this happen everywhere. Like I said, I'll go to, the, I'll go eat somewhere and I'll hear mariachis. I'll go to my cousin's funeral. I'll hear mariachis. I can listen to it on radio. I mean, there's a, it's, it's all over the place. So it's a real common practice, but a lot of times we see it in different special occasions like this. Like, like I know, like for me, like I've always been like when my primas or my primos get married, I always try to be the one to get the mariachis for them. <laughs> and so that's like, even becomes like, a big significant part of, of, of even family practices. But there's also a lot of, of interesting stuff in regard to, to mariachi as a genre itself. And we're gonna, you're gonna be doing a reading that addresses some of this stuff. Um, and one of the things is, is the idea of how um, mariachi has, has been this uh, machismo based um, uh, musical genre for a long time, right? Where it was totally um, controlled, if you will, um, by the male dominant um, um, uh, figures that end up taking on the, the role of the mariachi, right? Like we hear mariachi and we think of a man, like that's like pretty weird. Like why, why would that be? But that's because 
that's how how um, it was structured, right? And so mariachis in the past were all just dudes, and then they started um, uh, allowing women to be a part of it. And even that was kind of an interesting thing because it was always in 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 parts that uh, we would see where where it was the the tender moment, if you will, and they'd have the woman and there this 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 fragility, this this um, uh, femininity um, being um, uh, pushed into the song, but in the benefit of the masculinity, right, of that machismo. So you hear those, like, I, I think of, of Volver, Volver, like the actual recording, and you hear, like, all this stuff, right, and, and you hear him talking about, oh, please come back, and I screwed up, and all this stuff, but then, like, there's this part where the lady, like, just talks, and that's it, you know, um, and then we see other um, uh, uh, mariachi groups that incorporate uh, female uh, participants more, but that's going to take a while. Um, in the 50s, we start seeing more females being a part of mariachi um, uh, groups, but it takes a long time for them to be showcased. And it was, it isn't until later when we see people like, um, even like Linda Ronsant, who you guys are going to watch the concert for, um, take on that role of being the leader, the Vicente Fernandez of the group, right? Um, in this male dominated uh, genre of music and being amazing. And that's what's kind of cool now is that we're starting to see a lot more of those um, uh, walls of, of, of uh, uh, gender bias and stuff like that being broken down um, in this genre of music. Um, the reading I'm going to have you is like a critique on that and, it, and or that we're having you read is a critique on that. And, and it kind of discusses the fact that there's a lot of these elements still uh, a part of it, but now we can go to a, and see and order and have mariachis perform for us. And, you know, like some of them will be females, but that, that was a more uh, current thing. It's, it's been, um, it hasn't been until um, the last like 50 years that that happened before that it was always just a male dominated genre of music. Now we're seeing more. So we have like, I don't know if you guys have, if any of y'all have seen this this um, documentary here, Flor de uh, Tolache. Um, you should check it out. It's awesome. And they did a really cool performance on, on NPR Tiny Desk performance. Um, and they're like a full uh, female uh, mariachi group. Um, and then we also have um, uh, uh, interesting things happening too with mariachi where we're having um, uh, mariachi groups that are um, part of the LGBTQ community uh, where we even see um, that being a part of it now. So this idea of, of um, LGBTQ community also practicing um, and, and participating in mariachi, this male dominated and machismo uh, musical genre, but now opening it up to where we can see more of this. Now, does that mean that it's like all better now and all good? No, there's still a lot of that machismo and stuff embedded in the genre, but the fact is, is that we're starting to see more and more of, of this kind of thing um, happening. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that it is so opened up. It is out there. Like this is a genre, like like you don't hear uh, too many people talking about Son, son Jarocho. Um, because uh, of mariachi, mariachi like is huge, right? So even though Son, Son Jarocho is an influence to it, like it's it's not as much in the limelight as we see with mariachi. And so, um, you know, this is this is what we're going to continue talking about this week. Um, hopefully, this was a good little brief, uh, quick um, uh, intro to it. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to add comments to, to add comments or text or email me or, or Professor Sanchez, and we will respond. Um, hopefully you guys have a nice rest of the week, and thank you for your time. Goodbye.